this season's set is not my as a musical, and that doesn't just mean it has a lot of insert songs. The songs are a mix of diegetic and not, and all convey plot and character development. This is rare for anime and for serials in general. While a TV show might have a musical episode or movie, anime like Kagero Days and Black Rock Shooter are based on series of songs and music videos but aren't musicals themselves, and shows like Prince of Tennis and Sailor Moon are well known for having a lot of adaptations and non-canon side stories and stage musicals, full shows that are musicals aren't too common. But Sadazanmai's themes of desire and secrets are a perfect fit for the musical format, using its common types of songs and basic structure, albeit swapping in the opening and ending for the traditional setting-establishing opening number. Musical theater tends to follow a basic structure, even if not every show does everything on the list. Since we're only halfway through Sadazanmai, I'll be focusing on what generally happens in the first act. We usually have an opening number that establishes the setting and the first hints of some of the main characters. Now, as a weekly airing anime, Sadazanmai has an OP that plays in place of that, and I should note that the first episode doesn't skip either the OP or ED, as has been commonly done for some time now in other shows. Sometimes there are multiple songs setting up the plot and characters in different ways. For instance, if you've ever seen The Music Man or been in the production in high school, the first three numbers set up in succession that the main character is a con artist, that the town he's going into is full of stubborn sticks in the mud who will be hard to convince of anything, and that he starts trying to get around that by stirring up a moral panic about the nearest scapegoat, the town's new billiards hall. Sarazanmai does the same with Sara's insert song, Hokago Kappa, or After School Kappa in the English dub. At first it just plays in the background showing that she's a popular idol the whole city watches. But the song's lyrics constantly reference Kappa as a species and tell a sad story about a lonely student realizing they're not being ignored, they're a ghost no one can see. This not only hints at the mid-series revelation that Sara is a Kappa too, but contributes to her role as the chorus providing exposition. Plus this cutesy number establishes the lonely existence of the main characters, the Kappa boys, who are technically dead whenever they transform and can't be seen by the outside world. Its speaker died in an accident much like Haruka's too. So while it might be hinting things about Sada herself, the details seem to develop the people around her, much like her TV announcements. Then we move to the most important song in the early first act of just about any musical, and Sada's on my fans will probably be highly amused that the industry name for that is the I Want song. The musical theater pattern has an outline where the main character or characters are unhappy and unsatisfied because they desperately want something, they spend the first act doing whatever they can to get it, sound familiar, and by the end of act one they've usually got it in part, but now they have bigger problems. Sada's on my, of course, is all about desire and how it can go wrong, both with the deviants who get zombified and are driven solely by twisted desire, and with our main trio. Naturally, just about every song in the series is in part an I Want song, but especially Sada's on my Nouta, or Song of Sada's on my. Every episode's variation on the song used when they fight the zombies focuses not just on what the zombie of the day was obsessed with, but also on the boy's desperate wish to protect the secrets that their Sada's on my technique will always ring out of them. And speaking of wishes, the plates they collect from the zombie Shida Kodama grant wishes, and so the boys go along with Kepi's order in part because they want their wishes, and in part because he forced them into it. It also makes sense that the use of the song in power exposes their true feelings and the secrets they can't normally vocalize to one another. That's a twist on the fact that a song in a musical is meant to do that for the audience. But Sada's on my Nouta is also, in a sense, a conditional love song. Traditionally in a musical, and usually after the I Want song, a conditional love song is sung either by the main pairing before they're together, or by one of the two opining alone about love and wanting love but wondering how it might go. A popular variant is having two characters who hate each other clashing to show the audience they're really just Zendetta or will change their minds eventually, and another is having it sung by the platonic leads instead of a romantic pair. Wicked did both at once, and that ended with everyone shipping it. In every episode, the Kappa boy who's the focus of the day sings that he needs to stop the zombie and protect his secret before the person he likes finds out, though who that is and what kind of like depends on the boy. Interestingly, the concept of the conditional love song was codified and named for the musical Carousel, which had a song called If I Loved You. Carousel as a whole has a theme of playing it safe versus taking risks that might be bad for you, and its main pairing is unhealthy, tumultuous, and at times abusive. Sounds a little like Anta's behavior towards Kazuki, where he does things about his crush that would normally be romanticized in a lot of fiction, like pestering him to come back all the time, trying to use Kazuki's secret reveal as an excuse to get closer, wanting to use a wish to change Kazuki's mind, and kissing him while he's sleeping. All things Sada's on my shows is actually not that great. Director Ikuhara Kunihiko's famous previous work, Utena, dealt a lot with the idea that some things people fangirl over in fictional romances are gross and creepy in real life, so it's worth noting. 
And at about this point, after all the set establishing, the I Want song, and some silly and energetic crowd antics, a musical will get into subplots, villain songs, and or secondary couples. Naturally, again, starting in episode 2, we get another recurring sequence that works as all three. This is probably the show's most popular number, Kao Soya, or if you're watching the dub, Otterly Sexy. It's also, of course, about desire, being what the cops, Shreyo and Mabu, find important and what they kill and zombify people for. So it's obviously a villain song, and the initial storyboards were going to lean into that, making the sequence more inspired by The Phantom of the Opera. But in a show that has such a focus on desire and love being connected opposites, or two sides of the same pink icon circle, the ostensible villains of the first act being a romantic couple, and having their own Utena shout out in the sequence, also fits this in another slot, the Beta Couples song. A secondary or beta couple will often have an establishing song around this point, and their issues will reflect another facet of the theme by contrasting with the main couple. In this case, while Enta wants to be with Kazuki but is just driving him off, while Kazuki is starting to connect with Toei because of what they have in common, Mabu and Jeo are an established couple, but their relationship is on the rocks. The song sequence displays Mabu's artificial heart, which symbolizes that he's lost the ability to make emotional connections like he once had, even if Reo wants to reconnect with him. So the visuals in the musical number point out the contrasting problem they have to our heroes and how it further explores the show's main theme. And given that the theory that Kepi is the real villain is starting to hold more water than a Kappa's head plate, making Kao Soya just a villain song wouldn't have been as effective. I'm not sure of all the reasons that Sarazanmai was made a musical when that's so uncommon on TV, but it's very deliberate, following the structure and playing with the formula of a musical rather than just having a lot of insert songs like, say, an idol anime. The focus on desire versus love, with how important those are to musicals, is probably the main one. There's also the stereotype that associates musical theater with gay men, but I haven't been able to find if that's a thing in Japan, though the female equivalent certainly exists in Takarazuka. In all, the first act tends to end with an up-tempo, exciting sequence followed by the characters starting to get what they want and then everything crashing down, and we've definitely seen that in the last three episodes, with no spoilers for the people who haven't seen it yet. Go watch it. Though maybe not in front of your grandma. Let me know in the comments what your favorite song in Sarazanmai is and why. This is Secret Identity Studio, and this is where we find out how many anime fans out there were theater kids.